What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here and welcome to part 6 of our React Native Redux tutorial where I show you how to build this Capo Keys application from scratch to finish. Now, don't worry, this is the finished product so we haven't actually got this far yet. What we did in the last video was we created this header over here using React Navigation. So what we need to do now is, before I go on with making this key component and this Capo component and this Capo Key component, and the button as well, we need to actually think about managing the state because if we think about it, these different buttons here that we can change are all pretty much, well, they're going to have to keep track of each other. So it'd be nice to know that we're keeping the application state. Remember, we're using this section over here and this section to calculate this section. So everything needs to be stored in the application state. So the selected key as well as the selected capo. And when we say the selected key, we're going to refer to the selected key index from that JSON file we created earlier. Right, so here I am at my application in Visual Studio Code. And I want to mention, please leave a comment below if you've got this far into the tutorial to say, hey, I'm enjoying this. And as well, subscribe if you haven't and leave a like to the video. I uh, just want to get that out the way there. Really appreciate it. Anyway, let's go on. So I must mention, I forgot to do something in setting up my app boilerplate. So when we use these reducers, we have the store over there and we have the reducers. Now we also have to have actions that manage the change for the reducers. So the reducers manage the state, but you have to have actions that will trigger these state changes to happen. So we're going to add a folder called actions. And in here, we're also going to have an index file. And for now, we don't have to stress what's going to go in there. But what I want to do is, if you think about our application, let me bring it up again. Here is our application. So we have this key that we want. We want to keep track of the selected values. So the selected key and the selected capo. So what we need to do there is we need to actually manage when these are changing and track when they're going to change. So we're going to have another folder in here for actions. And the actions are referring to when they change. And these actions are going to be called key actions because they're all actions to do with changing the key. So whether it be the capo or the normal one. And what we need to do here is we need to export two things. I'm also going to import something just now, so I'm leaving a gap there. We're going to have to export the action where we want to say select key index. That's an action that we're going to name. And that's going to take a payload, the payload being what the index is. So the payload is just referring, that's a broad term for what is going into the action. And what is going to return is an object with type. And this is where we say what our action type is going to be called. And I'm making this constant, I still need to create the constant. I'm making the constant uh, select key index. And then I'm also going to put the payload in, what I I'm basically putting it as payload in as payload. But because they named the same, you can shorten it with ES6, which is great. Another thing I need to export is the const select capo. Now these are pretty much the only two actions that we are using in our application. But this also the same way actions are all just exported this way. They take in a payload and then they give you the type, just like select capo in this case. And we have our payload here. Now, the reason we're putting this as a special type thing is because I actually want to import these two things selected or select key index. So that's an action and select capo. And I just want to import this because it's best practice to import them from their own little file because we're going to use this for the reducers as well. So I'm going to put another file in actions called types.js. And in types.js, we want to just export those two that we did there, select key index. I know this is new and confusing, but you'll get this as we get to the end of the tutorial of this lesson. So there we are setting this constant select key index just to be select key index a string. And then we also have const select capo. Now doing it this way is just a best practice because if you were to use the string in here, so you could just say the string here, like select key index, but it's, it's better to use a constant that's created because it will pick up your errors later because you could have a typo in the select key index and then you wouldn't know. But 
thanks to ESLint and everything working out, you'll start to see that, hey, something's wrong here and we need to fix things. So this is just to protect you from typos because we're also going to be using the same constant in our reducers which is actually what we need to go do now. But before I go on with that, let's head into our actions index.js. And what we want to do here is we need to export all from dot slash key actions. So this way we are able to simply import like everything from the actions. So because later on, we're gonna have another folder called modal actions. I'm going to make that folder as long just so I can prove a point. Now, nothing's going to go in there yet, but later on, we're going to make some modal actions as well. It's nice to keep our actions in their own folders for keeping our code organized, because that's always a very good practice to follow. And what we're going to do is later on, we'll export all from the modal one, but I'm not going to do that now because there's nothing to export. So it might break my application, but we can leave the modal actions.js file there empty for now. Anyway, those are our actions. So whenever we look at our application, here's our application. Whenever we look at it, it will, we could do an action like changing the key. So that each time I change the button, it is me doing the action of select key index. And the same for Kappa. Every time I do this, it will call the action select Kappa. So every time I change it, it's calling that function. So how do we manage these? Well, we need to do those in the reducers. So we're going to head over to the reducers and we'll go to our key reducer. No, we're not going to that reducer. What am I even saying? We need to make a new reducer. So create a new file in reducers called keys. No, it's not even keys to reducers. We're going to deal with the selections that's changed the state of our application. So we're going to call it selections reducer. The keys reducers to get our, our normal, our key list. So the keys reducers responsible for getting this key list that we made over here. Here we have our selections reducer and here we can import those actions that we created just the types so from and remember this is a folder out into actions into types and we want to get select key index now remember we created that over up here in types and we also want to get select capo so this way we just know that we're importing it from the right place and everything should kind of work. Now, what is freaking out over here? Oh, this is supposed to be actions.types. There we go. And this is just freaking out because we haven't started using them yet. So now what I want to say is I want to make an initial state. So this is the initial state for our reducer that's managing the selections. And this state is going to be the selected key index. And we'll make it to zero that would represent the first index and then selected capo. These could be whatever you want. I just like to set the default to zero and seven, just to give a bit of variety there. So that would mean if we look into our application here, we have our key and what we need to do is we'll have, if the app was default, it would be set to this where we have key C because that's the zero index and it goes one, two, three, all the way up to 11 yeah i think that's 11 should be 11 and then we also have our capo which goes to the different positions which is gonna be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 2 11 so that's 1 2 11 so the capo is just an index that we set on its own and the selected key index that comes from this keyless json that we have over here so that is 0 1 2 all the way down to 11. anyway back to our selections reducer what we need to do now is this is quite an important thing for reducers. We're going to export default and we're going to have the parameter of state, which by default is going to be the initial state. So if there is no state currently stored for the application state for this selections reducer, then the state will equal initial state. And we're also going to pass through the action that gets called. So whenever an action does get called in our whole application, you'll see this working in action later. I said action. Uh, whenever that happens, we will we'll get the action, which was sent through either this or this, or whatever the action name was. See, in this case, we have our keys actions over here. These are the actions that go sent through, and they have their payloads as well. So the type is what gets recorded here for the action. Anyway, back to our selection reducer. What we have is we're going to have a bunch of different actions, but we want to look at which type happens. So we're going to have our action.type. And remember, this is type from up there that we said 
type. We'll have our action dot type. We're going to switch through this. So depending on what action type it is, we will do different things. So in the case that is select key index, we'd want to do something. And in the case of select capo, we'd want to do something. And the default case, which shouldn't happen, if it does happen, we just want to return the state as it is. So if some other action happens that we don't want to plan for, then we can just deal with it that way. So what I need to do now is actually create my state cases. So in here we want to return the state that it currently is, as well as the selected key index. There we go. And the selected key index is going to be the action dot payload because the payload is what we're sending through. So we have that and it will return there. And in this case, if we change the capo, we're doing that action. We're going to return as well the initial state that it is. So the current state plus the capo. Wait, what are we changing even? I'm trying to think now. Yeah, we're returning the, we're returning the selected capo. So we're saying selected capo state of this reducer to action dot payload. There we go. And let's put a semicolon there. So this is the best practice way to change states in Redux. And it's very important that you do it this way and not your own weird little way, like just going and setting selected capo. You have to bear in mind that you're returning the full state now. So that's why it's important that we return the current state that is going on here. This is just ES6 for saying, hey, return the state that it is now and return selected capo. So we're setting a whole new state and the whole application is going to be rerun. So it's very important that we keep the initial state, which is either going to be the current state that we're returning in an action or the initial state if there is no current state. It's a bit tough to grasp at first, but you should get it over time. Okay, guys. So now what we have done in this video is we have set up this whole selections reducer and we've managed to put in actions. I haven't really been able to show you much of how we're using this in our application yet. I've just given you the concepts of what's going to be used in our full application where it's done. But this is some very important logic work put into place. So bear in mind that this work is very important. We're going to see this kind of in action in the next video where we start setting up our different components. Remember, we need to set up the capo buttons and the capo key and all of that. I haven't actually put in the logic yet to show you how to calculate the new capo or the new capo key, but we will do that later down the line. I just wanted to set up the boilerplate for these reducers, which is quite important. And I needed to set those up before we could start making our different components, which are going to use the application state. So that is why we have done this video. But anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, leave some comments. I love comments and be sure to make sure you have subscribed and hit that little bell. You get a little bell like next to the subscribe button that lets you know when new videos come out, which is obviously very important because you'd like to know when new videos of this tutorial come out or new videos of newer tutorials come out, which would also be really great. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut up now and I'll catch you in the next video.